Hello. Today we will discuss about Schrodinger's wave equation. The Schrodinger wave equation is the basic backbone of quantum mechanics. So let's start this one. So we're considering a quantum mechanical particle of mass m moving along positive x direction. It's a one-dimensional system. The particle having some potential energy v and its momentum p and the total energy represented by e. So the wave function or the particle wave equation is given as psi a e to the power i k x minus omega k. And graphically it can be represented something like this. And this particular wave function, this graphical representation or that mathematical expression, it contain all the information about the quantum aspects like groove velocity, phase velocity, the concept of uncertainty principle and other aspects. Now, we will go to deal with some mathematical things with this. So, have that wave function, psi, which is a function of space and time. Now, this will be differentiated with respect to x and with respect with respect to time. So, when you are differentiating with respect to x, obviously this is the variable part and this is the constant part. And when you are differentiating with respect to time, so this will be considered as a variable and this will be considered as a constant. So, let us start with this one. So, if you are differentiating with respect to x, what you will get? So, obviously that i and k will come out as a constant. And it's the exponential function, the whole function will repeat. So when you are differentiating with respect to k, uh, expect to x, this will be i k and whole psi will repeat this. So we have this expression. i k and the whole psi is repeated. Differentiating it again, d2 psi dx2, this will be i k whole square d2 psi. But what is i? i is under root of minus 1, squaring this one, this will give you the minus 1. So, we have that second order derivative of this. Now, if you are multiplying this thing with minus h k square divided by 2m, what this will give you when you are multiplying this one? Now, see, in the right hand side, this will be, this will basically gives you a factor something like this, h k square k square and divided by 2m. This will be considered as p. This is basically p of p square. So, what is this p square? We have mentioned this thing, p is the momentum of the system, momentum of the quantum mechanical particle. What is this p? p is represented by h divided by lambda. This is from de Broglie's hypothesis. So, this can be considered as h divided by 2 of pi multiplied with 2 pi divided by lambda. So, what is this h divided by 2 pi gives you? This gives you h cross and 2 pi by lambda this obviously gives you k the wave vector. So, we have p square divided by 2m and what is this p square divided by 2m? Obviously, this is the kinetic energy of the system. So, if you add potential energy for a particular system, the potential energy is fixed. So, this is a constant thing. So, if this is fixed, if you add this one, so you will get the total energy of a particle. It is a quantum mechanical particle. Now, the second part, if you are differentiating with respect to time, what you will get? When you are differentiating with respect to time, d psi dt, what this will give you? Obviously, that minus sign will appear because you have considered this is as a minus i will be there and omega will be there. So, minus i omega and the whole wave function will repeat. And the whole wave function will repeat. Achha. Now, again, I am just multiplying this thing with i h cross. i h cross when you are multiplying, again, i square gives you minus of 1 and you have minus 1, this will be plus the h cross omega. What is this h cross omega? From Planck's hypothesis, we know energy of a quanta is represented by h frequency. So, h divided by 2 pi multiplied with 2 pi into frequency. 
so this is h cross and 2 pi into frequency what this will give you this will give you omega uh, this is the energy of a quanta or as for the Einstein's relation this is the energy of a photon so this is when you have considering the quantum waves of the energy is given by this one now we know that this particular thing when you are differentiating with respect to space this will give you the energy of a particle in form of particle kinetic energy plus potential energy and when you are differentiating with respect to time, this gives you that wave energy. So we can equate both of them. So when you are equating both of them, so the left hand side, this is the energy in form of particle, the quantum particle. And here, this is the energy of the wave. Now, the, this is the converging position for the wave particle duality. We have the aspects of particle and also the aspects of waves. So it converged at that particular point. So mathematically at least, we don't have the fight between that particle properties and that wave properties. So this is the simplest form of this particular equation. So what this will be called as? This is the equation for a one dimension. Let's start with one dimension. So this is obviously the one dimension. One dimensional Schrodinger time dependent equation. Remember it? It's a time dependent equation. Now another part. Quantum mechanically, all the dynamical variables or the physical variables will be represented in form of operators. Now, the operator form is given as, so the H is known as that kinetic energy. So, this part is obviously the kinetic energy and this is the potential. This is known as Hamiltonian operator. So, in a very simple way, one can say when you are operating Hamiltonian, when it's operated, the wave function is operated by Hamiltonian. This gives you energy E sign. So, in uh, if you are considering free particle, the free particle means it's having only kinetic energy, potential energy part is zero. You can say potential energy. You can put the potential energy and have this expression. So, this is a free particle equation, free quantum mechanical equation. Or we can write it for the three dimension. For the three dimension, obviously, the wave function will be represented for x, y, and z in a Cartesian system. And obviously, it's a time. So, when you are considering a free three dimensional particle, so you can have this particular expression. But if you want to have a, a particle which is not free, so obviously, one can write this is as v, x, y, z. Now, potential, obviously, it will depend on the space. So, this is the del square, del square operator, obviously this is uh, for the x variation, y variation and for the and for the z variation, second order derivative of x, y and z. So, this is the Schrodinger's equation. So, you can write it for the two dimensional also. This is the Schrodinger's equation where we have that kinetic energy part, potential energy part and that, uh, that wave energy part. Now, what will be the solution of this differential equation? Obviously, uh, you can just look at this is a differential equation. It's a second order derivative and it's a first order derivative. It's a differential equation. You need to solve this differential equation. Now, the problem is uh, we have the space dependency, you have a time dependency. When you have the, both the things together, the things is very, very complicated, space and time dependency. So now, what we're going to do, we'll try to have a, a separation of the space dependency and the time dependency. So, wave function can be dependent, which is, again, I am taking it for the one dimension, so things will be simpler, which is x and time dependent. So, now what we are going to do, we are going to take all the x inside that u function and all the t inside this f function, they are separated. How are we going to do this thing? Say our wave function was represented as a e to the power i of ax minus of omega this was there. So now, for simplicity, what we are going to do? We are going to consider e to the power i of kx, okay, multiplied with e to the power minus i omega. Now here, this will be represented by u of x, that's x dependency. And this particular function is given as f of t. So you have that separated, all that f. So you have this thing, 
now we're going to put this thing in the equation <coughs> so uh, just let me delete this thing now the thing is in the left hand side now in the left hand side you have the time dependency so when you have a time dependency obviously u of x will be considered as constant so they have taken as a constant and for the right hand side see it uh, here you have the space dependency on the variation with respect to x position space. So obviously the ft will be considered as a constant when you are differentiating this. Now you have an expression something like this. Now we are going to multiply it. It's simply a, 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 a multiplication of 1 divided by u and f. So when you are just multiplying this thing, so obviously the u u will be cancelled out. So what is left? 1 by f in the left hand side. So just a product of this. Thing. So this will be u will be cancelled out, f is left. And in the right hand side, obviously the f is there and f is there, f f will be cancelled out. This will be left with 1 by u. And this is u and uh, u and f both are there divided by u and f. This will be cancelled out. So after simplification, we have an expression something like this. Now see, in the left hand side and the right hand side, the left hand side you have only the time dependency and the right hand side you have the only the space dependency, left and right. So obviously they are separated and they will be considered as some constant. For the quantum mechanical system, that constant term will be considered as the energy of that whole system, that quantum mechanical system. So separately left hand side and right hand side will be equal to constant equal to that energy. Now come to this point, if this is equal to E, so what will be the expression now? So I have just uh, written, this is for the left hand side, this is equal to and this is for the right hand side. This is equal to. Now let's start with the solution for this uh, equation number 13. What you have i h cross 1 by f d f d t, this is equal to E comes from this particular part. Okay. So what we are going to do? We can take it over there. So this is df by f and all the terms are taken over there. This is dt. They have taken dt. Now if we integrate this one, this is in the form of dx by x. So when you integrate this one, what this will give you? This will give you the natural log of x. So basically we have a natural log of f. And you have this particular term. So when you are integrating over dt, obviously this will give you t over there. Okay, so I've just missed this thing. Let me just put this one. This will be t. Okay. So now when you are integrating this one, you can get what is f. So this side you have ln of f. f is a function of t, and you have this particular function multiplied with t. Okay, after integration. So the f can be written as exponential term, exponential that's factor multiplied with t. And c is given as the integration constant. So what you have got? What you have got? So you got the function, you got the solution for the time dependent function. So the time dependent function it shows that it's an exponentially negative function and for the right hand side what you have right hand side you have this particular term this is equal to some constant just rearranging the thing so i'm just taking it uh, uh, this side and you are just replacing this one so you have this expression now see if you are able to solve this particular differential equation for space will give you the solution this will give you the solution for the space dependency and you already know what is the nature of the time dependent solution it's an exponential negative solution this will decreasing function so if you are considering your function f with respect to time so you will get your solution is always decreasing that the time dependency is always decreasing with respect to time now we will have a solution for this uh, space dependency multiplied with this factor this will get the overall solution Now, this expression, 
this particular expression now it's only the space dependent so this is known as Schrodinger's time independent equation so earlier one was the time dependent both both space and time was there but here we have only the space dependent so this is a time independent equation and I have written it for the one dimensional okay so we can also rewrite it for the two three dimensional two and also three dimensional so one can say it's a complete equation complete equation or a wave function it may be uh, uh, one dimension it can be extended for the two dimension it may be extended for the three dimension so the psi this is given as you will going to find the solution when you go to find the uh, differential equation you're going to find the solution for you and this is for the time dependence so obviously if you know that you multiplied with exponentially decaying function this will give you the overall solution of the Schrodinger wave equation thank you so today we have discussed about the Schrodinger's wave equation thank you